That's right, and the test results show that this was a white shark. Uh, based on the bite marks, uh, researchers believe this was a juvenile shark, approximately six to seven years old, and that it was approximately nine feet long. But the big question is, is that same shark still here off the coast of Del Mar? Now, researchers don't know the answer to that yet, but they do have the wetsuit, or the DNA that is on the wetsuit of the man who was bitten, and they say, in theory, they could use that to figure out exactly which shark bit him. As we try to use this new technique, that really could be a game changer. It could help us better understand how we might be able to identify wet sharks to individuals using just sloughed off DNA. And so that was Dr. Chris Lowe, the director of the Shark Lab at Cal State Long Beach. And he says this new technology could help them better understand how the shark population is growing, how it may change. And he says at some point you may be able to just take water samples and identify exactly which sharks are out there. So it could really help further our understanding uh, of these creatures. Now, the problem right now is money. This testing is very expensive. The Shark Lab runs entirely on state funding, and that funding is going to run out in September. So Dr. Dr. Lowe says they don't have the money right now to run these tests. Now, the 46-year-old man, Caleb Adams, uh, was bitten in the chest last month about 100 yards off the coast of Del Mar. Dr. Lowe says the other big thing they're trying to figure out is why. And that's a tough one, right? Because we don't really know why sharks occasionally bite people. It could be that they're biting because they're in a feeding mode and they mistake us as food. Or it could be that they bite us for defensive reasons. So, for example, we know there are lots of white sharks off Del Mar and Torrey Pines because that's an aggregation site. And they're around people every single day. So if, if sharks are being scared, why aren't they being scared every day? And why aren't they biting people every day? We just don't see that. And he says that sharks primarily uh, feed on flatfish as well as stingrays. He says that we as humans are not on the menu. He says if we were, then the uh, coast of or the Southern California area would essentially be a Costco uh, for sharks. Now, by the way, if you're wondering why the term great white shark isn't used anymore, I asked that question today, and he told me at one point they thought there were more species that, of white sharks. That was why they called it a great white shark, but he says that just isn't the case. Kirsten and Carlo. Uh, sharks, a uh, uh, source of endless fascination for people. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people want to know just how big could that white shark that bit the man last month get? And also you mentioned Shark Lab. They're running out of funding. Can people help them out? Yeah, so as far as how big this shark could have been or could get, uh, they are very big creatures. Uh, they can grow as long as 23 feet. Females are bigger than males, and, and they can live as long as uh, 70 years. Now, as for how you can get involved, yes, uh, you can make donations to the Shark Lab. And, and again, the funding runs out in September, and he says if they don't get any more private donations, they may have to shut everything down then. So we do have a link set up on our website, cbs8.com. Just click on this story. I should also note they have an open house set up for July 20th. It's totally free to the public. You can go to the Shark Lab there at Cal State Long Beach uh, and just learn for yourself from the researchers that just the kind of work that they do. Absolutely. Kelly Hesedal reporting. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks, Kelly.